Hi there, so I'm spending my tea breaks um, asking some of the big brains of the world answers to the big questions of life using arts and artefacts as my evidence. Um, and today I want to think about poetry. So some people might think that poetry is a bit of a kind of fancy la -de -da luxury, uh, but actually it is the mothership of all literature right across the world, the Iliad and the Odyssey, or the Epic of Gilgamesh from the Middle East, or the Mahabharata from India. Um, these are some of the first ever stories that are set down. So I thought that I'd um, reach out to my mate, uh, a man who has poetry in his soul, Ben Ockrey, to ask him what is the point of poetry. <laughs> oh my god, Ben! <laughs> Hi! It's so lovely to see your face and I can't believe we're not sitting together at a kitchen table drinking whiskey like we normally do. Uh. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the ancient Greek word for poetry, you know, is poetes, which means a maker. A maker, yeah. So I guess, you know, you're not just making words, you're, you're making sense of, of feeling by making poetry. But I think when they said po uh, poetry is making, I think they were also talking about its difficulty um, as, as well. Uh, which we which we tend to forget that is a thing of of great difficulty and rigor and craft as 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 tough as shaping a rock or as carving uh, an abode from the side of a mountain mm, wow. and possibly uh, and possibly as perilous yeah so she's a kind of demanding mistress poetry then um, no mistress mistress doesn't begin to do it goddess properly please <laughs> <laughs> I just really want to show you this. Do I need my glasses? Oh yes, that's uh, uh, an illustration of Rumi's great poem, right? Bang on! That yes. is absolutely right. That is absolutely magical. So this is him under the under the tree in white and this is his student next to him in red but what is so beautiful i think about this is that can you see he's weeping yes so we're actually being told here that it's okay for grown men to cry but he was also a poet of vulnerability wasn't he yes i love the fact that rumi is sitting under a tree that is a perfect um, image of the poet in, in, in nature. It is as if they're getting, uh, they're getting the authority of verse from nature itself. That speaks to, very truthfully to, to the muse, to, to, to poetry itself, to the condition of poetry, and to the way in which it speaks to us, to the way in which it seduces us. Can I just read you, this is, this is one of my favourite lines. More than a line, please. More than a line, I'm so, yeah, okay, I promise it'll be, okay, a verse, a verse. Cry out. Don't be stolid and silent with your pain. Lament, lament, and let the milk of love flow into you. The hard rain and wind are ways the cloud has to take care of us. I love that. I love very much the idea that lamenting, lamenting twice, that sh shedding your tears, expressing your pain, allows love to come into you. Poetry is often considered to be very dangerous, so Plato, in his Republic, he says that poetry stirs people up so much. He wants to have poetry banned from, from his kind of ideal world, the Republic. Yeah, but only, only, a, poet, only a poet could know that. Mm. Um, because we have to remember that, poet, uh, that, that Plato, though, though he was a philosopher, was actually also um, a playwright. I mean, he knows how dangerous poets can be. He, He's, he's, working, he's working those very dangers on us, the reader. Mm. The Republic itself is a, is, a, is, a, is a vast, indirect political poem. 
a poem about 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 the powers um, of this world. The only trouble, of course, with uh, with what he says is that um, the minute you ban poetry from the Republic, poetry is born there in unexpected ways. It cannot be banned from the Republic. Yeah, so it's part of the people, part of the earth, part of the trees, the rivers, the pain, the love, the suffering. Sorry, Plato. Impo <laughs> you, may, you may as well ban life from the Republic. <laughs> All these great poems, the sort of the Epic of Gilgamesh and Homer's poetry and the Mahabharata, they, these were all spoken, they were shared, it was a kind of shared yeah. experience. And I love the fact that neuroscientists now tell us that we react to poetry in our brains exactly the way that we react to, to music, but it allows us to be introspective while we're, while we're still with a group, which has to be really, really potent and, and important, doesn't it? When you're, when, you're, when, you're, when you're given a reading, you read certain lines. People are looking at you at first, they're looking at you while you're speaking, and then you read certain lines and their gaze suddenly dissolves and it goes far away to some moment in their childhood, to somebody that they've forgotten, to someone that they love that they haven't spoken about for a long time, to some feeling, some emotion, some journey. They've, they have, they've expanded beyond the, 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 the boundaries, boundaries of the room. Wow, how be what a beautiful thought. It's cathartic for the poet, but also for the for the reader or, or for the listener. It takes you to a thousand places, you know, one word can 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 transport you there. Yeah, one word can do it. Absolutely. What <laughs> word did you choose? And I don't know. I love you know my favourite word is, is Xenia. I love this oh. word Xenia, this idea of guest host friendship, you know, a, yes. a stranger is also a friend. That's that's more, the most poetic word that, that I have in my canon. Uh, so that's a, okay. Next time, I, when, I, when I'm thinking of writing a poem for you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work that word in in a crucial way. Oh my God, Ben. <laughs> if you wrote a poem for me, I would just basically <laughs> die of happiness. <laughs> So would you say for the naysayers who say poetry doesn't matter, we don't need poetry, it's a kind of luxury, what, what's, your, what's your response to that? I think without poetry, we, we slowly perish. In just the same way, without flowers, we will, we will surely die of drabness and boredom. Without, so, and without trees, we would wilt. Um, and without love, we're just skeletons, um, fleshed over and unanimated. Um, Poetry is a music and a flower uh, and, uh, and the beauty of life.